King Kong. Looking back, the back lot was symbolic for Hollywood. And making movies was my dream. So coming to Universal for the first time was a dream come true for me. The back lot it has a magnetic attraction to a young filmmaker. The scenic docks with these massive paintings of blue skies and all this artistry that's been connected with filmmaking. You get to shoot on the lot, and then you look over, and it's like there's Jaws. And then you look a little bit further, and it's like a Dr. Seuss village. What a fun place to work. It's got the theme park, and it's got the working studio. It's not like a fake studio where you're going through a tour, and it's just kind of like extras pretending to make movies. They're really making movies there. When Carl Limley opened Universal City, his intent was for it to be the movie-making capital of the world. And that's what it turned into. Anything and everything that filmmakers want to do is here at Universal Studios. I love being at Universal. It's always been a great home uh, for filmmakers. Bob Zemeckis had his home there, and Ron Howard had his home here. The next cue, he says, stay, Elliot. You know, it's thrilling that guys like Steven Spielberg were able to find themselves creatively at Universal. Hitchcock had an office here. Just to know that he was there and walk by and know he was in that office and know that such an incredible genius was in residence here. For years, Alfred Hitchcock had his filmmaking home on the Universal lot. He arrived in 1958 and went on to make The Birds, Family Plot, Topaz, and perhaps his most famous film of all time, Psycho. This is the Psycho House. One of the most recognizable and terrifying sets on Universal's backlog. Now this particular house, it originally consisted only of two sides. It was just this side and the front that were actually shot in the first film. She might have fooled me. But she didn't fool my mother. In later years, they ended up adding two additional sides to make it a full, complete home. Hitchcock wasn't the only filmmaker to leave a lasting impression on the lot. Spartacus Square was originally built for Stanley Kubrick's Spartacus, and it's still there today. One of the most recognizable areas in the entire Universal Studios lot is right here, Courthouse Square. Now, Courthouse Square was built in 1948 for Frederick March's An Act of Murder. A lot of people recognize this area from the 1962 film To Kill a Mockingbird. Let's go watch! No, dude! But even more recognizable, this was Hill Valley from Back to the Future. Just behind me, in fact, is where the clock tower was located. You might recognize this iconic street as the place where Michael J. Fox drove his DeLorean up to 88 miles per hour to get back to the future. Driving around the back lot, so many movies made there. There's that little, like, Mexican plaza. That is the oldest still standing set in Hollywood. And that was built for silent westerns. Carl Emley really wanted to have western sets available to use, so they were permanent structures. We did classics like Winchester 73, Destry Rides Again, and My Little Chickadee. When I think about Universal movies, I have a real soft spot for all the great monsters. Ah! 
Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, Mummy. Creature from the Black Lagoon, really fine films. The Court of Miracles is a pretty spectacular area. It's a very distinctive area, too. Everybody recognizes the fountain right in the middle. That is where all of our monster movies filmed. It's a beautiful courtyard area modeled after basically any European town. Scenes from Creature from the Black Lagoon were shot at Park Lake. It's a versatile man-made lake that has been used in dozens of TV shows and movies. So whenever they want to shoot a scene from a lake or a swamp, they can shoot right here at Park Lake, which is behind me. It was a thrill being on that lot. Going to a bungalow that had been there for 40, 50 years. You really feel part of a continuum. The universal lot. It was like what I dreamed of movies being. Sort of golden age and that grandeur. The set for the Phantom of the Opera is still up. It's kind of been changed, but it's up. Here we are in one of the most historic locations at Universal Studios. It's stage 28, otherwise known as the Phantom Stage. It was originally constructed in 1924 for Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera. Over the last 85 years, it's been used countless times whenever a Universal film has needed a theater set. That set is such a deep part of the history we have on the lot, and it's all within the walls of a soundstage. What a lot of people don't realize is the movie magic that takes place inside of sound stages. Interiors are transformed into any set that you want to be part of your production. So what is seen on the outside is just a big brown warehouse. Actually inside, there's movie magic that's taking place. And it's just breathtaking. The worlds that are created on these sound stages. Well, the fun of The Grinch really was being at the helm of a movie that was probably one of the last of its kind. Action! We had 11 stages occupied on the Universal lot, and sets that were made functional enough that you know we could shoot on them, actors could climb on them. It was uh, really a wild, creative period. As I sit here in front of the Spartacus set, where we shot the gospel scene in Blues Brothers, I look back and feel privileged and honored to have had such a rich experience on the Universal lot. It's still, I think, the best back lot in LA. I know it's a cliche, but it's, it is a really magical place. I love it here. This will always be my ancestral roots, and I will always have a place in my heart for Universal.